Hello everyone and welcome to the very first non-canon Exeter by Night CPU tournament. Here we will watch as 16 of Exeter's resident kindred go toe-to-toe -to -toe for the championship and the ultimate goal of any vampire anywhere, bragging rights. Now without any further delay, let us begin. Here you can see the combatants have been divided up by numbers into their respective brackets where they will each face off against one another until only one remains standing. And first up, we have... Soul of Tira. Ooh, Shiloh versus Ileana. An Exabot question mark? Versus the Baron of Exeter, who is rather suspicious of the uh, young runaway. Well, looks like we got some bad blood brewing between these two, so let's see if uh, they can sort out their differences tonight. And the fight begins, and Ileana goes right in for it. Uh, Shiloh's trying to take some sort of a uh, fight, and it looks like she's using a, a large metal bladed hoop. Not sure about the practicality or where she even got that, but she seems to be making use of it, so, you know, whatever works, I guess. Still, Ileana is showing why she is the Baron and how she has survived as long as she has. It looks like a pretty even fight so far, but oh! Shiloh is seizing the edge, this doesn't look good for Burn, and oh! Down goes Baron Ileana! Looks like round one goes to the fledgling Shiloh. And Ileana is moving quickly at the start of round two, trying to make sure she doesn't get any hits. Lands a hit on Shiloh, Shiloh starts to run right back at her, and it looks like Shiloh has shifted her battle style a bit, but Ileana is trying not to give her a chance to use it if she can help it. Ooh, some strong kicks. Looks like Shiloh's guard is starting to wear down a little bit. Ileana is still standing pretty strong, and now she is showing that she is done fucking around, but looks like Ileana is taking some blows from Shiloh, and she is... Shiloh's going on the defensive, but it's not defensive enough as Ileana takes round two! Stand. Fight to your last breath. Battle three. Fight. And round three starts off, and Ileana's landing some chip damage here and there, and she is trying to make it so that Shiloh cannot get a hit in edgewise, but Shiloh manages to break through with a grapple and get some strong hits on. Oh, looks like Ileana's going for a soul charge now! Her blood's gonna be that much stronger, and. Looks like Shiloh knows it, so she is going all out, but uh, Ileana looks... Oh, actually Ileana's not looking so great. Uh, another hit, and it looks like Ileana might be done for. Oh, barely to help them, and oh, down goes Ileana for round three. Victory will not come easily. Battle four, fight. The fight rages on still as we get to round four, and Ileana is trying to make sure she gets some quick and precise blows. She's making full use of her celerity and years of combat experience, but uh, it looks like Shiloh is trying to take what she's learned from her uh, past mentor and what she's had, and oh god, off go her pants, that's not good, that's rather embarrassing. Ileana really is going hard, it isn't she? She is fighting too humiliated, oh and away goes the coat too! Oh man, this has just been an utterly disrespectful fight as Ileana takes the second win. And here we are at the final round. We're just gonna ignore the fact that it's sunny out. And oh, Shiloh is pissed. She's going straight in for the special attack. But that may have been a bit too much too soon. As now Ileana still got quite a bit of help to her, and she is able to turn the fight around, land a special move of her own after winning the gamble fight. She draws her blade, goes in, puts all she's got into it, lands a strong blow. Oh, that. This is not good for Shiloh so far. But she may be able to turn this around if she is very lucky. And she knocks her out of the fucking ring! What an upset! Oh, what disrespect! Managing to snatch victory out of the jaws of defeat in such a fucking way! Oh, poor Ileana! She thought she had it, but she didn't! Looks like Shiloh advances to the next round!
All right, and up next, it looks like, wait, what? Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, we have a celebrity in the house tonight. It is Mr. Theo Bell, former Archon and all-around kindred badass. And his opponent will be... Uh, speaking of kindred badasses, looks so like we've got Miss Honey know. Parker in the house Good tonight. Choice. And it looks like she is showing no fear to fight against Theo Bell. I didn't know if combat was her strong suit, but she certainly got enough combat prowess to murder the shit out of her husband. Oops, did I say that out loud? Uh, it doesn't matter. This isn't canon. You a glutton for punishment? Battle one. Fight! And the battle begins, and Honey goes in for a headbutt, but Theo shows his experience, swiftly moves out of the way, but gets grabbed by Honey in a nasty smackdown. And Theo seeing what he's up against and all that potence. And he knows that he has got to land some blows quickly and strongly in order to get this done. And it looks like he is doing just that. Poor Honey is getting overwhelmed and oh! Off goes some of Honey's clubs. Clubs? To the what is wrong with my talking then? Either way, Honey prefers to remain covered up. She was, uh, from what I understand, an actress in life, and, well, becoming Nosferatu kind of ruins one's looks. But also what ruins one's looks is getting shot in the fucking stomach by Theo Bell, who is just putting up a relentless assault on the poor Nosferatu primogen, but she is shown she's not going down without a fight. But Theo Bell shows that fighting is exactly what he is about. Knocks off her mask! Oh no, that is not good. And now, Honey's scarred visage is out in the open for all to see after getting some terrible blows. Honey is no, no doubt pissed after suffering an attack and a humiliation like that. And she is showing it with that massive swing, but Theo is ready for it. Goes for another swing. Again, Theo is ready for it. A couple of missed blows, and oh, Solari's behind her. Honey's ready this time, and she is trying to just break through his guard with all of her might, and managing to land a few blows now. And oh, one hands him. She is taking back some momentum in this fight. Can she actually turn this around? Oh, it's not looking good, Theo. It's seizing the edge. Honey is going for a kick, trying to keep her distance, Theo closes the gap and ends it quickly. Oh, that is unfortunate, but Honey, I guess, was never really much of a fighter going up against a legendary fighter like Theo Bell. I suppose it was, but I don't know if Honey thinks the same way, Theo. And next up, it looks like we have Kenneth the Oracle and Malkavian Extraordinaire of the Camarilla versus... Melanie, a resident Tremere, or is she? Regardless, we are in for quite a fight between these two. In a cursed castle hall, warriors dance in a masquerade of death. Why do you choose to fight? My, you look like fun! Battle one. Fight! And Kenneth opens up with a quick attack, but Melanie's able to dodge it, and she is going in for a very swift and precise series of blows, trying to get as much ground as she can on Kenneth so that he can Oh, but Kenneth is taking back the edge and showing off his range, both as an actor and a fighter, it seems. And he is using that stab that he carries to very good effect. The fight is about even right now, but let's see if that can... Oh, he goes for a gamble initiative! Melanie dodges out of the way of that, she does not like to take chances, and she goes for a quick and powerful and precise backstrike, and takes round one with a series of very well-timed and well-landed blows! Fight to your last breath. Battle two. Fight. And here we enter into round two, and Kenneth is trying to make the most of his range and lands a strong blow with his step. Melanie gets in close, avoiding the step, and lands a blow not quite as strong as Kenneth, but it's not about uh, power as much as uh, quantity and precision with her. And she's able to take the edge, but Kenneth is able to take it right back and then some. And he is showing that he is not playing around any longer. But Melanie seems to know exactly what she is up against. And oh, wow, this fight has just been a very surprisingly even fight all throughout. 
but Melanie is once again seizing the edge, taking momentum. Kenneth is trying to take it right back, but Melanie is putting up a very strong defensive front and landing in some blows when she can. Kenneth lands another blow. She is now starting to wear down, but Kenneth is far more worn down still. And a swift blow and strong from Melanie takes out Kenneth for a second round. Fight to your last breath. We are entering round three, and this could potentially be the last round unless Kenneth goes absolutely, well, I'm not going to say it, but he's going to have to pull up some seriously good stuff, and it's not looking good for Kenneth right now, unfortunately. As Melanie is showing her own prowess and survival skills through this point against the Oracle. The Oracle's doing his very best, but Ke but Melanie's just doing that much better, it seems. This is a very surprising upstart. I will be honest, I did not have my money on Melanie for this fight, but uh, it seems she is showing her own, even against someone as experienced and powerful as the Oracle. Although he did go down in the warehouse fight, and he's down in this fight as well. The fight goes to Melanie! Looks like Kenneth's going to need some more blood, and probably going to need to get high again after this defeat. Yes, you do, Melanie. Yes, you do. And you advance to the next round. And for our next fight, we have Jason the Bio Hakim Primogen versus Delilah Desaurus the Toreador Primogen. One is a very experienced fighter, specifically trained and designed to take down Kindred, and the other is a uh, actress and singer with little to no combat experience. So we'll see who wins this one. Do not interfere. Don't underestimate me. Battle one. Fight! And so the battle begins and Jason goes in for a swift attack, but Delilah's circling around behind and goes for a backstab! The fight is so far even, but Jason is quickly looking to correct that, and he's landing a series of blows with his preferred weapon, the Rapier. Delilah, however, is apparently using a hidden Umbrella Blade, an interesting and very Toreador weapon of choice. And though surprisingly better than- wait, wait, oh, Delilah is- Delilah's actually managing to close the gap! This is a surprisingly close round one, but Jason is showing why he is who he is and how he got to where he is, and takes round one. Fight to your last breath. Battle two. Fight. Going into round two, Jason lands the first blow and is persistent to land others, but Lila has other plans and she's trying to take back initially from the fight and... Was she just toying with him in round one? Because she's actually getting a much... Oh, nope. She gave him too much of an opening and he is absolutely seizing that as best he can. She's going to have to strike a lot faster. Oh, speaking of striking fast, he is going for a special move. Oh, this does not look good. This is, yeah, that is definitely it for Delilah this round. And, oh no, even her code is destroyed. Your last breath. Oh, that must have cost so much. Battle three. Fight. And now we are in round three. This could be the very last round unless Delilah is able to pull off a massive miracle. Which doesn't look like is going to be the case, but wait, wait, wait. Ooh, a very nice combo, getting her a nice edge, but Jason is able to take it right back, getting his momentum and... Oh, what? Okay, they are trading blows now, and she's able to avoid his attack, getting him in the lows, putting up a defensive. Oh, one more strike, Delilah, can you do it? Can you get at least one win in this? Oh, that is unfortunate! She came so close at the end, but Jason wins without a single loss on his record. I had predicted this outcome. Unfortunately, so had a lot of us. And next up, we have Clint versus Rose. One is a lone country gang girl who wandered into the city, and the other is a Archon and member of the Wolf Pack, probably the sittiest boy you could ever fucking meet. Let us see who will prevail in this fight. I can't run away. And so the fight begins as Rose goes in for the first strike, lands it, but Clint is showing how he knows how to use those farming tools to great effect. And deadly effect, too. The fight is actually pretty even so far, but that is to be expected from two titanic gangrels such as these. Luke is showing off all of the brutal tactics that he knows, but 
Uh, I'm sorry, Rose is doing the brutal tactics, but Clint is also doing up some pretty brutal and cunning uh, country wild maneuvers. Keeping the fight pretty even and very much keeping it entertaining. Uh oh, looks like Rose is trying to break through his defenses a bit, but Clint is trying to take it back. Rose counters it. One more strong blow from Rose, and this could be it for Clint! Oh, down goes Clint in round one! Can he make it up for the others in the rest of the round? And now we are entering round two, and Clint gets the first blow this time, and it's a pretty strong one as well. Rose tries to go for a gambling attack. Clint is having none of that, and instead just tries to keep up his lead, but. Rose breaks through his guard and delivers a devastating combo to catch right back up, keeping the fight as even as ever. This might be the most even fight we've had since this tournament began. Clint is going for a very strong blow. He's got... Oh no, he destroyed Rose's jacket, his pride and joy. Now he is pissed! And he is delivering some very vicious blows for this in retribution for his lost jacket. Claiming victory in round two. He just needs one more win and he takes the round. And Clint's hood is destroyed as well, revealing his animalistic visage underneath. Looks like they both lost up this fight. And they have very similar attire, save for maybe their footwear. And weaponry. Once again, Clint is able to even up the odds after Rose delivers a strong start. Clint is managing to get some attacks in, and can he take the round? Uh, looks like Rose is getting caught back up. Another strong attack from Rose might do it. He's going to have to... Oh, and a kick to the dick, and Rose goes down to Clint! They fight dirty out in the country! So Clint managed to make something of an upset. Can he keep up the momentum? He is going in and lands the first blow. Rose is fighting with rage at this point at the loss of his beloved jacket. That, that shit's almost irreplaceable, but luckily this isn't canon, so he'll get it right back. And Clint is losing the edge as Rose is closing the gap, but he's taking it right back. He knows what is at stake and what is on the line, and he is determined not to go down easily to this city boy. And it seems that Rose notices what he's up against as well, as he is having trouble breaking through Clint's guard. That fortitude is really holding up, it seems. Clint might actually be able to take this. And he takes round two! The fight is even up! Oh, wow! We haven't had a fight this close since round one, and this time there's no ring outs to cheese anything. So Rose is going in, lands the first blow, but Clint is going for a special attack! It is blocked by Rose! He anticipates it! Got a little too eager there, farm boy. But, looks like Rose is going back on the defensive. He's calmed down and mustered his nerves once more. Goes for a grab, impales Clint with a brutal slice! Claims the edge! And he is trying to keep it and just go for the kill like a real fucking hunter! And Clint knows this, but it looks like his resolve is wearing down. This doesn't look good, and down goes Clint! But down he goes after a very good fight! Show respect for the fallen. Oh, well done to both of our fighters! You both put up a phenomenal battle, but Rose takes the win and advances to the next round. Cocky son of a bitch. And up next we have Judas versus Shark Bait. Judas is a devoted and dedicated member of the Sabbat with years of discipline and plenty of elders in his soul. And Shark Bait is just a reckless devil may care bruja with an attitude. Let's see who will prevail. Looks like we got a creepy venue to fight in, appropriately so. And afterwards our exchange, the fight begins! They both go on an offensive first, but it looks like Shark is able to land the first blow, and Judas is able to deliver it back, and then some! Judas is showing that skill and years of dedication and practice in his combat, but it looks like Shark is also showing off his own strength and bruja brutality! It appears to be not quite enough to match Judas' skill so far, though, as Judas is just going in for a series of brutal and precise Blows and down goes Sharkbait for round one! Victory that is unfortunate. And now we enter round two. Let's see if Sharkbait can actually make up. Uh, nope. 
He goes up for a guard, but drops it at just the wrong moment, and Judas seizes on it, but then he just goes in for a series of blows to clobber poor Judas. Like well, a pretty strong blow from the looks of it. But Judas is no stranger to conflict and knows how to take back the edge from combat, it seems, as he's managed to wear Sharkbait down, but Sharkbait is wearing him down just as much. This is a surprisingly even battle. Anyone could take it at this point. Another blow, but... Oop, not quite. Oh, and a quick and sneaky blow from Judas takes down Sharkbait in round two. Judas just needs one more to take the win. Is this going to be it? Ooh, wow, these are some sneaky blows from Judas. And he's entering a gambling match. Goes into the swing, does not pay off as Sharkbait takes the win in that gamble. However, Judas is compensating and just stabbing the fuck out of poor Sharkbait. Uh-oh, Sharkbait is going in for a special to try and catch back up. Ooh, nasty, using that celerity and bones to great effect. Landing it strongly, knocking you to sky high. Getting a good catch, but not good enough as Judas takes the win with a quick and powerful slice down goes Sharkbait. And bask in the glory. So, I'm not gonna lie, I kinda saw this one coming. Oh, you wouldn't have offered forgiveness. And up next we have another special guest, ladies and gentlemen, Beckett versus Liliana Giovanni, the resident godmother of the Piccata in Exeter. And it looks like we have this scholar going up against this mother and cook. In a cursed castle hall, warriors dance in a masquerade of death. I can see the fear in your eyes. You're gonna regret fighting me. Battle one. And the battle begins as uh, Beckett lands a strong series of blows on the defensive against Mama Giovanni's uh, bowling pin, avoids her attack! I heard Beckett was a scar, but apparently he is also quite the fighter as well. Then again, I suppose with someone of his age, it is to be expected. Landing a very strong offensive against Mama Giovanni, but she is showing she's not going down without a fight, knocks the coat off of Beckett! Oh my lord! But Beckett still takes the win, but not without some serious loss. And now Beckett is fighting shirtless. Maybe there are some women who would enjoy this. Maybe Mama Giovanni does. I don't know. And it looks like Mama Giovanni is trying to go for another effective, but... Oh! She manages to avoid Beckett's attack, but also Beckett blocks hers. Looks like nobody wins that sailmate. And Beckett is unfortunately carving through her defenses. And he manages to take round two. Stand. Fight to your last breath. And wait. Alright, we're on to round three. Can Mama Giovanni manage to pull off an upset and take three wins in a row? Or, uh, no, it looks like Beckett is gonna just show off his own gears experience and prowess. This is, uh, this is not a good day for the Hikata of Exeter. Oh, no, don't tell me, don't tell me. Okay, well, it's not going to be a perfect victory for Beckett, at least. Mama Giovanni can say that. But, looks like Mama Giovanni is not able to win this time, and Beckett claims victory. Your conviction holds much promise. To say the least, Beckett, but at least you're gentlemanly about it? And up next, we have Milo versus Magnus, another Gangrel fight. One is a relatively newcomer, and the other is trying to be the Baron of the Outlands of Exeter. Won't let me pass, huh? You look like a real pain in the ass. Battle one, fight. And the battle begins as Magnus goes in to show off some savagery with his claws, but Milo seizes an opening and manages to show off her own savagery with some devastating effect on poor Magnus. Magnus tries to take it back and begins fighting like an animal, a very, um, like a, it's like a ferret meets, uh, I, I don't even know. But either way, he is slashing away with those claws and showing the feral spirit that the Gangrel hold. Still, Milo is not a pushover either. The fight is even up and Milo takes the first round and destroys Magnus's coat in the process. Talk about fury. And... Milo goes for a grab, but Magnus breaks free from it, still managing to land a small hit. Magnus lands a bigger one in turn. 
and she tries to drag him back. Scratch, scratch at him a bit, but Magnus is able to take it somewhat, and Magnus is now delivering his own power and precision, and showing off the wild experience that he has as a Gangrel, and now he is invoking a Soul Charge to power up his moves, and he is not going to be outdone this round, slicing away and taking round two. Alright, round three begins. Both fighters are evenly matched so far in terms of wins, but Magnus is showing off more of that primal ferocity that he holds, and he is trying to make sure that Milo doesn't get a single opening. A very uh, persistent but uh, efficient strategy. Especially if you can keep it up, and oh my god, he just might. It's a gamble, and it does not pay off as they both tie, but. He seizes the victory in the end, knocking off Milo's shirt, and oh, a perfect win! That is, that is not good for poor Milo's image. Looks like now they both lost some clothing, but uh, Magnus still more so. And now Magnus is about to go for a special, he lands it, and oh, that is nasty on a lot of levels, but... It looks like she's still up, but let's see how long that can last. Can she summon that same ferocity for... Oh, no. It looks like Magnus is about to take the win here. And down goes Milo. Well, at least she can join Clint in the loser's bracket and they can hang out together. That was actually kind of fun. I suppose it was, Magnus, you strange and savage man. So as we exit the preliminaries and enter the quarterfinals, I would just like to remind our audience members that none of this is canon, so please do not get upset if uh, your favorite character uh, lost or if the fight did not go the way that it probably should have in canon. Because, once again, this is not canon. This is all just bullshit. And speaking of some bullshit, next up we have... Soul of Tira. Shiloh versus Soul Theo Bell. Oh, this ought to be good. Shiloh made quite the upset in the preliminaries when she was able to pull out a last-minute victory against Primogen... Uh, against... Uh, Primogen? No. Fucking... Baron Ileana. But, now she's up against a former Archon and the Slayer of Hardestot and a champion in fucking DC over the guy who was running it, I don't remember his name. Either way. You look like a real pain in the ass. Battle one, fight. And so the battle begins and Theo charges in and just starts laying into poor Shiloh. And he is not letting up. He knows what happened to poor Eliana, and he is not giving her the same chance to do anything, but also, uh-oh, looks like she is taking her chance, and Shiloh is... Oh my god, she is feeding on Theo Bell! What the shit? Looks like Shiloh's really giving into her beast now. And Theo is not having any of that, and he is not fucking around anymore. He closes the gap with swiftness and ferocity, but can he seal it, or will Shiloh get there first? It is close, and Shiloh takes a first victory with a slice to Theo's poor bells. Oh dear lord, let us see that. Oh, if he were a vampire, he wouldn't be having children. And now we're entering round two, and Theo is fighting Shiloh's beast who is fighting with extreme ferocity. My goodness, I'm beginning to see what Pierce sees in poor Shiloh. But it looks like a tie in this class, but... Oh my goodness, Shiloh wins it, and oh my gosh, he's going for a special combo! Oh dear! The savagery! On Theo fucking Bell? Oh god! I guess let this be a lesson, folks. Do not destroy Shiloh's clothes! And away he goes, and again to the dick! Oh my god! Why? Why does she keep slicing him in the dick? Well, Theo, can you pull out a victory, or is Shiloh just going to fucking humiliate you and your entire legacy? Oh! Theo is taking the edge back. He just needs a few more good hits, but Shiloh is not- Oh! And down goes Shiloh for one round! Stand. 
fight to your last breath. I don't mean to sound like I'm cheering strictly for Theo, but after the two wins, I'm giving him a little bit of support, what can I say? But still, Shiloh has plenty of opportunities to close this up. Oh, she undershot it, unfortunately, blowing her special. Theo's going in for a gambling attack, and he calls it right this- Oh, no, it's a sail me! Oh, he calls it right this time and lands it! He is not messing around, and he is letting his own beast take some control as well, it seems. Agent experience are definitely showing versus the beast's blind ferocity, but the beast is also an eternal opponent that the vampires have been fighting and losing for for decades, but not this round as Theo manages to take the win, and it is close once more as we have two fighters, two victories, and this one will take it. Who will land the first blow? It is Shiloh. Can she keep momentum? No, she cannot. Theo manages to strike her from behind and shoot her, and he is going. He's trying to claim the head, but... Oh, Shiloh's going in full frenzy mode now. Theo sees it. He's getting very careful and ready with his soul charge, and he is landing blows strongly and trying to make sure they stick and do as much damage as possible. They are both fighting very defensively, very wise at this point. A very smart team on Shiloh. It looks like you're starting a great deal of control, but not enough as Shiloh's knocked out of the tournament in round two by Theo Bell, but after a very admirable fight. Holy crap, what an incredible bout. Well done, Shiloh, and even Theo acknowledges your prowess. Theo, you move on to the semifinals. And up next, we have Jason versus Melanie. Uh, Melanie pulled up quite the upsetting win as she managed to defeat Kenneth last time, but now she's standing up against the Banu Hakim Primogen and all of his vampiric warrior prowess. Let's see how this goes for her. In a cursed castle hall, warriors dance in a masquerade of death. Do not interfere. Come on, you look like fun. Battle one, fight! And the battle begins, Melanie charges in and goes for the first blow! Wow, interesting! And she is keeping up her momentum as well! Melanie is quite the fighter, but it seems Jason has a handle on her technique now and is ready to counter with everything he has. But Melanie is showing that she is not done just yet, but neither is Jason, as he is taking back the edge, closing the gap, Goes for a kick, defensive block from Melanie, and she is striking back, it's neck and neck, surprisingly close fight, but Jason takes it for the first round. Victory battle two. Moving into round two, we have a projectile from Melanie, but Jason is able to avoid it. Jason and Melanie are still trading some even blows, but Melanie is taking the advantage, but only just, oh, goes for a grab, throws Jason to the ground, and she is going and keeping her momentum and then some but Jason takes it right back and let's see if he can close the gap oh he's now on the defensive and Melanie is not ready for that attack she's going in she waited for her opportunity and she's taking it and taking every action she can with oh wow way to take back the win Melanie stand fight to the last breath now if only her legs and her dress could actually not clip through one another. Another mount, another false start with a projectile attack as she goes in for a special and a combo, lands it. Oh my, what an amazing display. Thrusts down and strikes Jason to the ground. And she still has not even a scratch on her just yet. Jason's, Jason's glasses are now broken. And he's not even land a hit on Melanie. Oh my goodness. Oh, and going for a special. She blocks it! She blocks Jason's special attack! Goes in for some revenge strikes, punishing the shit out of him! Goes in for another special attack! Two in one round! The disrespect! But can she seal a victory? It's not that hard. She just get one more bow in. And down goes Jason for a second round. Melanie just needs one more win to take it. Who will come out on top? Jason needs to win two fights in a row in order to come out on top here, but that is not above the Bono Hakeem Primogen. Unfortunately, landing a special seems to be in this fight. And Melody is again just styling the fuck out of Jason! What the fuck is happening right now? Jason is using the shadows and trying to use all of his warrior process to catch up to Melanie's progress. 
But Melanie is not slowing down either. Goes for a blow to the foot, fighting dirty. This is what happens when you have to survive like she does. Oh my lord, how is this even? Oh wow, and Jason goes down to Melanie. Claim victory and fast. At the very least, he's not going down to a full proper Tremere. I win. Yes, you do, Melanie. Once again, you take a surprising win. And everyone, everyone, this next fight is going to be a good one. We have Rose versus Judas, two hardened and experienced warriors facing head to head against one another in a clash of Camarilla versus Sabat. Even if Rose is kind of barely Camarilla, but that's beside the point. The memories of ancient battles slumber eternally unknown. You will die. You've got battle one. Fight through. And so the battle begins and Judas lands the first blow, but Rose returns it in spades with a furious gunshot. And now they are returning to Blaze and Alyssa Rose is maintaining the edge this time, but Judas has shown that he's more than capable of taking it right the fuck back, as we can see right here. But Rose is a fortuitous sort and he is not gonna go down as experienced as inexperienced as Sharkbait does, and oh my god, Judas' fine clothing is just torn away, as is his victory in round one as Rose takes the win. Goes to the last one standing. Entering round two, Judas is getting kind of pissed, and Rose is taking full advantage of that, seizing on his uh, mistakes and just taking every opportunity he can to cleave through any openings that Judas leaves. But Judas is also cleaving through as well, showing that he is not going to be taken down or made a fool of so easily. But can Rose seize another victory in round two? It is neck and neck, and oh, another quick blow, and Judas goes down in round two as well. Judas is gonna have to really up his game to catch up. And he goes for a sweep to the leg, but Rose is ready for it. Rose goes for a special attack, lands it! Oh dear, and oh, Judas is eating some lead now, and now eating steel for the celerity, and down into Judas with some feral potency, and probably some protein as well. Either way, that is some nasty damage to poor Judas. And Rose is showing that he is a member of the Wolfpack for a fucking reason. Judas tries some Zemisi and Sabat fuckery, but Rose is ready for it, blocking the attack. But, oh, they're getting right next to the edge. Judas could seize on this up. Oh, Rose is smart, he's getting away from the edge, and Judas is right at the edge of defeat, unfortunately. Oh, and down goes Judas with a mighty swing from Rose. Looks like the Sabat does not triumph this day. Nothing to fucking say for yourself, huh? Fair enough. And next up, we have another gangrel fight of Beckett versus Magnus. One is a refined scholar, and the other is a fucking wild man. Let us see who can triumph, civil or savage. The tragic fall of the cherry blossom magnifies its beauty as with life. I can see the fear in your eyes. You look like a real pain in the ass. Many have said the same thing about Beckett, and you are not wrong. And so the fight begins. Magnus goes right into the attack. Beckett is on the defensive, but not defensive enough as... Oh! He goes for a jump grab, but Beckett breaks out of it with swiftness and grace, and he is cutting down poor Magnus now, it seems. But Magnus is going for a swift kick and a claw to the back, showing his versatility and flexibility as a fighter. Beckett is going to have to recover, but recover he is, as he still has more than a bit of ground on uh, Magnus with his own blows. And with a rising strike, poor Magnus is sent plummeting! Pulls his way back up, and round two begins. Beckett runs in, but goes for the defensive. False start, but Beckett is, uh... Not punished, as Magnus doesn't seize on the opening. And Beckett starts carving through, but Magnus is carving right back, it seems! The fight is now about even, and he is not going to be taken from behind, uh, Gaby. And, up, uh, Beckett is going... Carving through Magnus's fortitude. 
Magnus is still charging to try and ensure some more powerful results. Can he use them to his advantage and take the win? It's going to be close if he does. But Magnus is on the defensive. He's not getting any easy, but he's chipping through the defensive. And he breaks through! And he, he de-pants his back in! Oh! Oh, looking good there, Scholar! <laughs> Oh, it looks like Becker really got caught with his pants down. Uh, and now we enter round three and both fighters are even. Oh, this is going to be very distracting though, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. <laughs> but, uh, Becker is not going to be distracted by this fight, and neither is Magnus as he's just letting his full fury fly out this time. But now Becker is throwing his own fury as he unleashes a special attack, pulling back and a... Strong and swift strike through Magnus, but Magnus has enough health that he can take it. Beckett, on the other hand, is looking a little bit... Oh, and now Beckett's going for a gambling strike. It's a stalemate. Second round. Beckett takes the win, that one. Managing to catch up somewhat. And he gets rid of Magnus' shirt in the process. My god, this fight is getting very homoerotic. And down goes Magnus with the... I don't know if that was a stab or a strike or where it hit. Let's, let's watch that again. Uh, okay, with the strike to the ankle. From that angle, it looked like a blow to the dick. And there's been more than enough of that in this fight, and this fight is already, uh, manly enough as it is. Uh-oh, never mind, I spoke too soon. Magnus is going for a savage bite on poor Beckett. But, let's see if Magnus can take this second win, or Beckett will claim victory in this fight. Oh. Getting close to the edge, he's gonna try to throw him off. Beckett sees that trap and he's not having it, but that's okay because he's compensating with Vile Ferocity and again just carves through Beckett's defenses! We again have a very close fight as we enter the final round! Who will take this, the pantsless Beckett or the shirtless Magnus? Who will win, the top or the bottom? I... I, I, I don't even know what else to say, they're just trading blows and it's mesmerizing to watch this utter display of beastly grace, I guess, and savage fury. I think I'll just let you guys at home just enjoy this. A little bit of penetration there from Beckett, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh! And in probably the most homoerotic ending to a fight ever, Beckett strips poor Magnus of his pants. Says the man standing in his underwear. And now we enter the semi-finals of the very first ever non-canon Exeter by Night CPU tournament. And up next we have Theo Bell versus Melanie. Ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between, I never thought I would be seeing this fight going into the semi-fucking finals. The old guard legend Theo Bell versus the newcomer neonate Melanie. Well, let's see if Melanie can keep pulling off these amazing upsets and beating off Camarilla veterans. That came out wrong. Offer to the gods of its deathly chance. Well, guess I got a clobber you. Man, you look like fun. That's one way to describe Theo Bell, and we'll find out if he is that fun as the fight begins. They're both on the defensive, dodges the bullet literally, and lands the first strike. Oh my god, Melanie is going on a pretty amazing defensive uh, force, and just landing blow after blow, keeping up her momentum, and... Wait. Oh. Theo is trying to take it back, but Melanie is not giving him the space. Goes for a blow blow again, and the projectile from behind blocks Theo's attacks. How do you even block someone like Theo? That's incredible, and oh, a blow to the toe, and down he goes! We enter round two, and Melanie's keeping up her trend of being fucking clutch. And Theo is not having any of that as he goes and clutches her and impales her. God damn it, that keeps sounding dirty. But it's swordplay, what the hell do you expect? Uh, well, what I did expect is Melanie to be going as far as she is. Look at this. This is like basically a... Basically, oh my god, she is a kitip. And she is taking on a fucking former Archon and a Anarch legend. No, a Bruja legend. But, oh, wait. And now Theo's showing up why he is such a legend and... 
drives poor Melanie into the ground. Melanie sidesteps out of the way, but he compensates and grabs her and takes round two with a very nasty looking slice. We're not going to watch that again. As we enter round three, they are both evenly matched. Melanie goes for a strike and gets a good combo off to start off with and keeps up the momentum with a similar combo and she is not giving Theo any space whatsoever, juggling the son of a bitch like he was a fucking ball at a circuit. I lost that one. But Theo might lose this one as his health is looking pretty low now and Melanie just needs one more good blow to land a victory and get a second win. Uh-oh, look out Melanie, you're near the edge. Theo is very defensive right now, as he ought to be. He has learned not to underestimate this Kai tip. And she is demonstrating just why. Uh-oh. Uh oh no! Oh no! Bring out! Oh! oh no! That is that you hate to see that happen! But you take what wins you can get however you can get them in these fights. Melanie is gonna need to uh Oh! She's starting off strong with a special move! And given her past track record, she's shown that she knows how to make those work for her. And she continues to do so. Uh-oh! Theo's going for a special move! He's She's not able to block this one! And down goes Melanie. Kneecap! Driven down, but she is still standing strong. How strong, we will find out. Oh, wow. I, I'm really rooting for Melly on this one, I am not gonna lie. She's just such an underdog, and she takes the win! They're even, neck and neck! Who will take victory in this fight? Who will move on to the finals? Final battle. Fight. So here we are in the final round of the fight for the semifinals. First round, Melanie is taking back the edge from Theo, who lands the first blow. She's trying to get behind him, but she's also fighting defensively, but a little too defensively, and Theo is exploiting that, but... Wait, she is coming back, she is coming right the fuck back. Theo goes for a sweep to try and get an edge there, not able to. He is shutting her down. She shuts his down, and oh my god. It's just so fast, so much to keep track of. Uh oh, Theo is still charging, Theo is still charging, he is done fucking around. He wants to end this quickly and strongly, and he just might. Melanie, can you come back? Can you take this? Oh my god, no! Poor Melanie! Theo takes the win from poor Melanie. She is not able to take out this Camarilla legend, unfortunately. But my god, Melanie, my heart is with you. Shut up, Theo! And once again, the last round of this particular segment goes to the dogs as we have a gang girl fight between Rose and Beckett. We have the member of the wolf pack versus the lone renegade scholar. Let's see who comes out on top, brains or brawn. A merchant ship replete with riches attracts more chaos than customers. You will die. So, you desire to fight. Battle 1. Fight! And the battle begins and we have Rose as the last standing representative of Exeter and he gets a quick and powerful blow from Beckett. Beckett is dominating the fight right now, but Rose managed to land a hit, at least. And, oh, Rose is taking some momentum back as he managed to get some blows on Beckett. But Beckett once again just skyrockets and cuts through Rose's defenses. Oh, this is not looking good for poor Rose. Beckett is showing his own absolute combat prowess. But, what's, what's going on? Oh, and round one goes to Beckett. Victory will not come easily. Battle two. Fight. Now we're entering round two. Let's see if Rose can take this back or if Beckett will continue his apparent stream of luck and or skill and survival. Oh wow, this is not looking good on poor Rose. Oh dear. Taking it back somewhat, but, oh, and carved through once more by Beckett. Victory will not come easily. It must be seized. Battle three. Now we're entering round three, and let's see if Rose can actually take this back, or if Beckett is just going to continue to just carve through everything. Son of a bitch. And now Beckett's going for a special move. Oh, God, it lands. 
A mighty strike by Beckett, but Rose, can you at least land one hit on him? You can at least land one hit on him. Can you turn this fight around, Rose, or will Beckett just carve the last of extra from this tournament like that? Okay, well, so much for that. The battle is over. Show respect for the fallen who fought so bravely. These are all, or don't bother showing up. Yeah, yeah. All right, and so we move on to the final round of Beckett versus Theo Bell and... Wait, what's this? I've just received word that both Beckett and Theo Bell have been called away by the Beckoning, so it looks like they, uh, forfeit, so it looks like the finals will go to the runners-up, Melanie and Rose! And so at long last, we come to the finals of the first ever Exeter non-canon CPU tournament with Melanie vs. Rose. Who will be the champion of Exeter in this bout? Will you fight me? Nice Your catch. Time has come. Battle 1. Fight! And so the fight begins with Melanie doing her graceful and amazing maneuvers as usual, but Rose is quickly countering and firing several powerful shots into poor Melanie, and then just carving into her and shooting her in the face again. You know, why does everything not to... You know, I'm not even... If I don't make it that way, it won't be that way. We're going back into the fight, and it's actually surprisingly close despite being as quick as it is, but Rose takes round one. Stand up. Fight to the... Going into round two, this is going to be close, or will it? Rose goes for a gambling strike, stalemate, but Melanie manages to make it her own, and she's catching up to Rose, surpassing his momentum, trying to take it back though. Ooh, quick dive, but not quite. And she is going for the edge. Can she strike it? Can she do it? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And... It's so close. Who will land the next blow to decide victory? Rose takes another win this round. Can Melanie pull off a miracle and make a comeback? Will this be the last round, or will Melanie show what, she, what got her here in the first place? Uh-oh. Rose is going for a special, lands it, kneecaps for Melanie, knocks her into the air, drills and drives down into the ground, Melanie rises up, she's still got some health from that, and she is going to show off her skill, precision, and power, and how she got to be a semi-finalist, and now a finalist in the first place. The gap is closed, Melanie's taking the edge, and knocks Rose off the ledge! All right! Victory More like this, Melanie. Standing. Bravo! Let's see how interesting you can make this. Battle four. Fight. Round four, and the fighters are on the defensive. Rose goes for a grab. Melanie breaks free of it and punishes the shit out of Rose for it. She is fighting very quickly and very maneuverably and landing close in every way she can. She's got just the swiftest mind and the keenest eyes to land these blows so accurately and to outmaneuver Rose the way he's been outpowering her. My god, my god, she might be able to take the victory. She might be able to even this up. One more blow, can you do it, girl? Uh-oh, Rose is trying to make a comeback of his own. He's not giving her a chance, but will she take the opening? She does and bop to the head and down goes Rose. This is how it should be, folks. A neck and neck, evenly matched fight. To win, to win, and who will surge the finish line for the final victory? Rose is taking a severe beating with Melanie at first, but he is taking it right back. The combination of swords and guns is quite a potent combo, as well as years of experience and skill and power, but Melanie's showing her own swiftness and ingenuity, and probably some magic, to bolster her own grace and. Oh! Oh my god, it's so close! It's so close! It's anyone's fight! Who will take it? It could be! Oh! Oh, she's barely holding on! Can she? Oh my! Oh my god! Melanie takes the win! With a sliver of health, she downs Rose and wins the first ever Exeter by Night CPU tournament! Ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in the
between I am in awe and yes you do win, Melanie! And so, ladies and gentlemen, that will conclude the very first Exeter Bionite CPU non-canon turn- wait, hold on a second. I'm- I'm receiving word of a development, apparently- Apparently a massive portal has opened up inside the ring and it's- It's swallowed and engulfed poor Melanie- Oh dear god, where is she gone? What's happening? We're, we're trying to get people down there to cover what's happened as- And we'll bring you all the coverage we can as soon as we have it. Oh my god! Oh my god, folks, I don't believe it! The Blurble has just smashed into our reality and dragged Melanie into his for a face-off with the champion of Exeter! Oh dear god! What is happening? How is this happening? Oh, Melanie, you have quite the fight ahead of you! Oh my- What? What hell dimension is this? It is the Blurble dimension! Blurble is talking that strong shit! But let's see if the champion of Exeter can pull off a win. Oh, and she's starting off very strong against the Blurble, but the Blurble is trying to make a comeback. But she's not giving it to him easily. She's striking low! Very- Oh, oh dear God, and she's been impaled with a blunt instrument. That is the strength and power of the Blurble. And again, it's just smacking her around and closing up the gap. Oh dear God, the chaos and carnage! Just what you would expect from fighting someone like the fucking Blurble! She's going for a special move! She lands it! And she downs the Blurble in round one! I will not lose! Victory will not Battle two! Entering round two, and we see that the Blurble's face and horns have been smashed in, and now he looks absolutely pissed! But Melanie is not giving him an inch! She is just going straight to town because she knows if she lets the Blurble in, it is over for her. So she is just taking every opportunity and lands a perfect victory against the Blurble. I don't believe it! Oh my god. Will Melanie managed to just three stock the Blurble? Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot believe what has happened this night. This is one hell of a first ever non-canon Exeter by Night CPU tournament. And I just want to say, whatever happens, I am so happy I got to share this with you guys. Melanie is holding her own against the Borble, but the Borble is chipping away at her defenses. But she is showing just how she got here in the first place with her swift, precise, and powerful strikes. The Borble is trying his best to break through, but he can't quite get it, and... And down goes the Blurble! Melanie has to restock the Blurble! Melanie, the CPU non-canon champion of Exeter! Oh my god, and dissing the Blurble at the end too! What a pro!